Welcome back to Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. We are of course in Alushinera. We are in the middle city and we are in the flesh markets where we have just uh, defeated uh, this uh, very nice Daddy Dunk slave master. Let's continue our uh, exploration of the uh, slave market. Here we have a guy called Raggy. The Cambion, who gives you a smarmy bow, looks like he once tried to split in two, then changed his mind. Does that work? His chest is twice as wide as it should be, and double pupils stare at you from each of his eyes. Every time this freakish creature opens his mouth, an impressive goiter swells on his neck. His voice has an unpleasant croaking quality, as if a giant toad had taken up residence in his throat. No, I'm not going to try to voice act that. Would you like to buy some fresh flesh? You can call me Raggy. I am at your service. Show me your slaves. I can offer you a shipment of Golarian slaves. They certainly aren't in the best shape. Golarians are notorious for their fragility. But torturing them sure is fun. As Raggy grins, you spot at least two rows of needle-sharp teeth in his mouth. The Golarian slaves are clad in torn rags, their bodies emaciated. Many have wounds and cuts, and their blank indifference to everything happening around them suggests these unfortunates lost any hope of escape long ago. Sila looks at the slaves with pain in her eyes. Oh, you... Poor souls, what have they done to you? It's over now. We'll help you. Where are you from? We come from all over, my lady paladin. Most of us were captured back in Canabras. As for me, I got caught on my way to Nerosian. I was on leave, going to visit my family. Wow, that's quite a journey you've had. But you will get to Nerosian and see your family again. I swear on my life. You hear me? Hold tight and tell the others not to lose heart. Sila turns to you and says gravely, We must get them out of here at all costs. We cannot abandon our own. If we did, we'd be worse than scum. Seizing the moment and deftly spitting at the method in the cage, Raggy nods at him. If you wish, you can also purchase this little blighter. Won't be of much use, but you can entertain yourself for some time torturing him. He is sharp-tongued and quite resilient. I guarantee you'll spend several interesting and pleasant evenings killing this little freak. Chuckling, Raggy watches as the Mephit wipes the spit from his face and mutters curses under his breath. The Mephit's voice is angry but tinged with respect. That Mephit is... weird. Sell me that Mephit. I won't ask much for this nasty piece of crap. Ten thousand. And watch your fingers. This little prick bit off a few of mine when I was chasing him. The Cambion shows you his hand. It is hard to miss the fact that the number of fingers is still far higher than usual despite the missing ones bitten off by the method. Not entirely sure if that's pointless or if it has any point the method is probably going to uh, run away no deal the slaver gives you a sleazy smirk you hear that you useless meat sack no one bloody wants you you'll rot in that cage and I'll watch you die you stupid piece of crap the method utters a nasty cackle and shows you its pointed tongue. It pauses for a moment, thinking, and then adds an obscene gesture that is unmistakable, no matter what plane you come from. Your slaves are lucky. They're about to see their master choke on his own blood. Out of nowhere, a knife with a wide jagged blade appears in Raggy's hand. Spinning the knife skillfully with his two, two numerous fingers, he leers at you without fear. You wanna dance? You 
Even the method just escape. Aha. Taking advantage of all the fuss, the method deftly picks the lock of its cage using its pointed tail as a skeleton key. Once free, it makes an obscene sound at Raggy, winks at you mischievously, and immediately takes off into the air. Yet another obstacle. Distract them for me. We're supposed to attack him. Oh, for crying out loud. Ah, we get the gold coin. Composite longbow plus three, leather armor plus three, ring of protection plus two, brace of archery, club resistance plus three. Okay. The slaves stand huddled in a tight circle. Knives picked up from the ground glint in the hands of some. It's almost as if the scent of demon blood has imbued their exhausted bodies with new strength. They are clearly no longer willing to simply watch their lives be bargained away. One of them, a young man with an injured leg, Flashes a bloodthirsty grin at you. So, what's next, sir? Should we run? Or should we face death here? We won't go back in a cage. We've had enough of this demon filth. Sad. Uh, send them back to Nexus. You can take refuge at my camp. The Omade bless you. Thank you for standing up for us. We'll never forget your kindness. The ragged slaves huddle in a tight group and hurry toward the exit. They are frightened and tired, but you can't see a glimmer of hope and defiance in their eyes. You did as every true Galarian should by saving the people from your homeworld from slavery. Thanks to people like you, my heart holds no doubt that we will emerge victorious from this struggle. A word of warning here. You can go to the middle here. That battle is necessary. And attack the uh, the big blob floating in the air there. But if you do that without going around the slave market first, taking down one by one, every single slave trader in the market will attack you all at once. And if you're playing on core on a core difficulty or unfair difficulty, you are very likely to regret that. Here's Krebus. The tall, thin vendor is swathed in a loose black robe. He's not a demon, but it is impossible to determine his race. His expressionless and hairless face is covered in tattoos and looks as if it is made of wax. His eyes are motionless. As you approach, the black figure almost doubles over as he sweeps into a low bow. The vendor moves with a supernatural delic delicacy and grace impossible for a human. He extends his arms, also covered in tattoos, toward you. The ink on his palms comes to life and forms the words Greetings, I am Krebus, vendor of magical lunatics. The voice of the hand sounds contemplative. I can sense shadows, evil shadows once served their old master, Viriavaxus, whom I fought valiantly, but had not the strength to defeat. Beware this one, champion, for he is linked to powers both formidable and cunning. Something inside you awakens and casts a fiery glance at the slaver. You can see the darkness curling under the thin layer of his skin, or rather a shadow resembling darkness, a demon woven of shadows. Let's first have a look at his wares. Show me your magic wares. Slaver gives you another low bow. One of his eyes suddenly rolls out of his eyes of its eye socket. With a neat, gentle movement, Grebus touches the eyeball and returns it to its normal place, and then points to his wares.
That one is interesting. He really does sell a lot of items. This one is so... Unholy Shepherd. a lot of scrolls here. I expect all of these are to brew potions or scribe scrolls, which I might do actually, but... Not now. Ready for anything. I want that one there, uh, but I do want mirror image. Can. My tail is restless. The road awaits. Oh, skip the pleasantries. I shall not fail. Focus on the goal. Rely on me. A goat, a lizard, and a human enter a tavern. I don't what steal. Be, I encourage people to save asks. the poor, helpless <laughs> tieflings around the world. Starting with me. The only uh, short time buffs you have. Here's so. Share transmutation. Cast that on Sila. We go. Uh, I don't think there's anything else that I need. No. Except for haste. Um, what kind of slaves can you offer? With a slight nod, Krebus not points at a group of slaves standing nearby. All of them are completely motionless. Their backs are naturally straight. They seem to be drugged. Their eyes are entirely black, without a hint of pupil, and in the depths, tiny blue sparks flicker like stars in the night sky. From time to time, some of the slaves utter something uncanny or barely comprehensible, then fall silent again. Tiny ink glyphs begin to appear rapidly on the slaver's palm, as if drawn by a skilled scribe. My lunatics. Magical ingredients for ritual sacrifices. Dissolved in blood. Fermentation finished. Distillation finished. Deposited into practical self-propelled storage units inside the slaves' bodies. By magic potential, the goods were examined and certified by esteemed Willidus. Approved for trading. I can sense darkness inside them. Not mundane darkness, which is merely the absence of light, but an embodied darkness that begets evil and possesses awareness instead of being emptiness and nothing. What cursed substances did he pump into these unfortunates? Keep an eye on them, for the darkness inside them waits for the right moment to be born into this world. What have you done to these slaves, and why? Snakes, made of letters, crawl over Krebus's hands. They are no longer slaves. They are vessels of magic. 
Their bodily fluids were drained and replaced by potions and decoctions imbued with energies. Their dried mummies were filled with the dampness of magic, and their dehydrated brains were filled with the mysteries of the universe. Top quality. Nahindrian, as they say here in Alushinera. Who are you and where did you come from? Three words appear on the vendor's palms. Rebus, from everywhere. A secretive stranger smiles lifelessly and shrugs. His soft, moves, soft flowing movements are so smooth as to be almost indiscernible, as if he were not a creature of flesh, but rather of melting wax. The slaver opens his mouth wide, and you see neither teeth nor tongue inside. Ink on his palm form, forms the words, I can communicate. It's what's something I want to check. Okay, so the uh, the buffs that we cast do not go down in conversation. We will not be making any deals. Two small projectiles whiz past your ears. The glass eyeballs have popped out of Krebus's eye sockets. Dense clouds of darkness flow from him in, from his impossibly wide mouth, gathering to form an eerie demonic figure. The figure bears its teeth. The pale skin now with no trace of the living tattoos, drops to the ground like an empty robe. The lunatics ignore the horrible met metamorphosis their master is undergoing. They stay lost in their magic trance. Can we retreat already? Deep shadows. Time to share your treasures! He's going to be difficult. I don't know if Feast of Blood will do anything to these brutes. But thankfully it did. Any negative damage there? No. Make every strike count. The light take you. Attack. <laughs> Cover me, all right. Went surprisingly easy. Krebus is among the more difficult ones of these. As it should be. No reason to pause. Jaws of the Jackal. I suppose those could be useful on Caledron. If I summon undead. Probably not that useful. A bright future awaits ah, us. Ah, the uh, legendary proportions buff is uh, mildly annoying. This is the guy you want to attack last. Ramisa the slave trader. The eyes of the translucent Marilith carefully observe her surroundings. It seems this is not merely an image, but a projection of the creature's consciousness, while her physical body is located somewhere far from here. Next to the Marilith is a fidgets, a shriveled mandrake, which utters the occasional displeased shriek. Ah, a visitor from another plane. I am Ramiza, also known as Slowed Skin. And I am no simple vendor, but a true artist of the slave trade. My warehouses currently stand empty, but we can always arrange for a custom order. What would you like to acquire? Perhaps your enemy's son or daughter, bound by magic and powerless in the face of anything you might wish to do to them? Or an attractive person who once dared to reject you? A little brat who bullied you as a child? 
Shinura is the city where all your dreams come true. Marilith licks her lips. Especially if they are dirty, bloody, and sweet dreams of possession or revenge. So what I see standing here is just your projection. Certainly, it is not safe to appear in the flesh markets in person, especially for someone like me. You see, before I switched to this line of work, I was a humble gardener. I used to grow mandrakes. The Marilith pats her ugly pet on the head. It is a well-known fact that mandrakes grow if you water an ordinary weed with demon blood, or if you plant it in a demon's corpse. The allies, lovers, and masters of those I turned into fertilizer are still searching for me. Thus, I conduct my business remotely. Same way, when I have slaves to sell, I first show their projections, and only after they're sold do I deliver them to the buyer. What do you mean by artist of the slave trade? While others trade for material gain, I do it for art. Like others, I am not involved in the faceless shipment of goods. Each slave who passes through my hands has a personality. Each sale is a spiritual experience. Not long ago, I sent my hunters to track down and capture a brave rebel fighting for the freedom of his people. And then I sold him, chained and dressed as a pleasure slave, to the tyrant who had enslaved his homeland. Some may call it cliché, but I call it classic. What happens if I try to kill you? Your attack causes no visible harm to the projection. The Marilith yawns theatrically. I'll outlive every... I'll outlive each and every resident of Alushinura. I'm leaving. That is not far. Um, this guy has gladiators. He's also the vendor. I can't take him out until I brought Sosail down here. Curse. Captain Curse greets you with a none too sober look and the cynical, merciless smile of an inveterate thug. Who are you? The demon stares at you in disbelief, then bursts into laughter. Who am I? I'm Curse, known by some as Curse Got Stabbed, captain of the legendary Bloody Bitch. I'm the most famous damn pirate in the Midnight Isles. You must be a landlubber who's never set foot aboard an airship if you haven't heard of me. You can travel to faraway lands whenever you want, but you choose to be a pirate? Only a real scumbag would waste that kind of freedom on robbery and murder. Aye, lad. The scummiest. Tell me more about being a pirate. What exactly do you want to know? The life of a pirate ship captain consists of four things. His vessel. His crew his experience, and Pazuzu's patronage, of course. You already have wings of your own, but you need a flying ship. Curse eyes you with suspicion, as if searching for signs of mockery in your face. Sure. And what do you propose I do with all the loot? Carry it on my back? What about the slaves we tuck into the cargo hold? The ship is a big flying treasure chest, and it also provides a fair amount of cover from arrows and spells that rain down on us during boardings. Tell me about your vessel. Curse grins proudly. You'll recognize my bloody bitch right away by the huge skull decorating her prow. We secured that trophy near Vazglar, and there was a great fight for it. A few other captains wanted to lay their hands on it as well. Aside from the skull, I've done good work on the bloody bitch. You can't find a better attack vessel. Her broadside can take a dragon's strike, her three-quarter sails can catch any wind, and her ballista... Her ballista? Don't rely on lousy spears, only alchemical fire. What kind of crew do you have on board? The roughest rogues and cutthroats you could ever want. They are my hand-picked collection, each one as bad as the next. 
They're the most notorious rabble, the most infamous scoundrels you could ever find in the abyss. They'd sell their own mothers into slavery for a chipped copper. Turn on me? Never. Nobody else could land them a better deal than I can. If they ditched me, they wouldn't make it three steps before taking a knife in the back, so they've got no choice but to follow me till the end. So, how many ships have you plundered? Puffing out his chest a little, the demon offer offers a fanged, leering grin, then answers with all the cutthroat swagger he can muster. The bloody bitch is well known in the Midnight Isles, and her black sails sows terror wherever she goes. I can't count how many poor sods I've sent to Dagon. I was leading the charge, saber in hand, back in the days when Rolexia was flashing her bare tits in the skies over Lucianira, when Sephorian, that old rapscallion, ruled the city. As for loot... Ah, the treasures that have passed through my hands. And I spent them all on booze! Hers beams with pride at this declaration. Tell me a thrilling tale. The pirate grins. You like gory stories, eh? I. Once we were floating by Migorg, when our lookout spotted the wreckage of a ship caught in a hurricane. So we decided to search for cargo, but instead we only found a sailor who was, clut who was clutching at the wreckage. We fished him out, brought him to his senses, hung him up in the mast, and questioned him properly. Our ship's cook knows how to loosen tongues with his knife. Long story short, the poor sod spilled that he was a pirate himself. His ship had set sail from one of Alir's deserted islands where they hid part of their spoils. We smelled a windfall, so we rushed to Alir. But Alir, that place isn't for the faint-hearted. Predatory vines, carnivorous flowers that breathe out clouds of poisonous pollen, and walking bush bushes that surround you, pounce on you, and sting you with thorns till you die. Oh, and did I mention toxic springs? Or the flies that crawl into your ears while you sleep and lay their eggs inside your brain, driving you insane? All in all, the place was a nightmare, and we found ourselves right in the middle of all of it. Three times our prisoner told us where to check for the stash, and each time we dug, but all we found was dirt and bones. By the third attempt, that damned island had already wiped out half the crew. We realized that asshole was playing us, so we gutted him. You know what he saw what we saw then. All his entrails were covered with whitish mould and overgrown with some spongy fungus. His heart, his guts, his brain, the gunk was everywhere. According to our ship's dock, that fungus controlled every one of the sailor's steps. But he got infected on Alir, then he left the island to lure in fresh fodder for the plants. We fled as fast as we could, but for a long, long time I couldn't believe those damn weeds got so smart they were able to trick us. That is a good story, actually. I mention Pazuzu quite often. You worship him? Sure I do. Only total idiots don't worship the demon lord of the sky and winged creatures. Well, at least if we're talking about aeronauts. All the storms, wind currents and beasts who feed on those currents, they will bend to his will. That's why I bombard Lord Pazuzu with my prayers as often as I can. I have no more questions. You asked too many already, stranger. Do you know Mialara? That nutjob? Ha! Ah. Her entire crew must be wimps and weaklings if they haven't slit such a leader's throat to, or fed her to Ishiar's beasts yet. You can't help but notice that despite Curse's dramatic bravado, a spark of fear gleams in his eyes. Let's attack him as well. I don't like you. I think I'll kill you. The demon bears his fangs and grins cockily. I haven't been to Elishanira for a long time, and I have no idea who you are, mortal. But I bet someone will pay a handsome sum for a slave like you. Be careful, everyone. I will see to your demise. Stab you or zap you? Why not both? <laughs> I love attacks of opportunity. It 
Mongrel. Still love haste. Oh, we do. A calculated risk. Okay, so Curse has a scimitar. Oh boy, how far have I scrolled up here now? Rapscallion. Um. Let's check something here. Um, yep. That's a plus five flaming burst flaming scimitar. That is a really good scimitar, actually. He has a breastplate plus three. Oh, incredible dexterity plus four. The rest of them, I expect it's... More or less average stuff. Yep. I'll go ahead. The book. The nature of the divine. Okay, let's go pick up Sosil. Before I do that, let me just quickly check what he has in uh, stock. Just to make sure that I'm not losing out on something that I would want. This one is pretty good for uh, Camellia. And anywhere near as good as uh, Radiance. Ooh, this one... I think I'm going to buy that. I mean, Dragon Bane is... Basically not very good. Since it's not like we're going to fight a lot of dragons. If it had been Demon Bane, it would have been absolutely amazingly good. There are a couple of dragons that will fight, but... Um... It's not like we get a lot of uh, dwarven, dwarven war axes. Ah, I'll, never mind. I won't buy that. You can always uh, kill things using our spells. This one is good, but there are not that many of my people who can use half plates. And it weighs a ton. Or 50 pounds. Most of the rest of it is things that I've sold to him, so... Yeah, no. Back to Nexus we go. Then we'll quickly just camp, I think. Because we need to redo all the buffs. If you like teaching me so much, why don't you open a home for little, little thieves? You could sit there smoking your pipe, rocking in your chair, and lecturing all the little crooks. Not a little thief anymore. You're a grown lad, so I don't doubt my lectures will work on you. I'm just trying to teach you a little dignity so you don't discredit us with your petty huster habits. <laughs> Need to redo the buff. 
uh, buff bot as well. Oh crap. No, I want to load that. I need to set up Social's uh, spells. Be right back. Here we go. I think that's about as good as I can get it. Uh, let's just... Uh, oh. Talk to this very long black mask again. The young cleric resolutely stares into the slaver's eyes. My brother Trevor was abducted by a demon in a black mask. Was that you? Where long sniffs the air? Well, well. That face, that scent. Yes, I remember him. He was a strong fighter, a dangerous one. I made good money when I sold him. Where is he now? To whom did you sell him? Answer me, you monster. Don't be so rude, young mortal, unless you want to meet your death sooner than you expected. I have only one buyer, a battle bliss. You want to know what became of him? Find out at the arena. In the arena? Socia looks at you stricken. So these beasts made him... Oh, Shellen, what cruel mockery. He's still alive, and that is all that matters. We can't waste time. We must get him out of there before it's too late. Who are you? I am Weirlong Blackmask. I was the champion of the arena, and I fought and killed in the name of my mistress, Shamira. I worshipped her. I was her slave and her bodyguard. She was flattered by the many killings dedicated to her honor and by the shouts of the crowd chanting her name. But then I had a dark revelation. I realized Shamira was not worthy of my worship. She owned me, but my true mistress was the one that entered the arena with me. Her hand in mine. Death. So I dedicated my next victim to her instead of Shamira. My mistress was enraged. She arranged a fight in the arena, when I had no hope of winning. I was hacked and cut, torn apart, choked, ground to dust by magic and impaled on spears. But still, I did not die. My remains were stitched back together piece by piece. Death was with me that day, and I returned even more powerful. But the fights lost their appeal after that. An immortal gains no glory fighting mortals, so I left the arena and I no longer kill by my own hand. Now I offer my gift to death by the hands of the gladiators I train. I take their names and their dreams, and in return I give them weapons and the dark revelation of death. What is this mask you wear? The first champion fought wearing this mask. Final champion will fight wearing it on the day this world ceases to exist. In this mask I was invincible. I conquered the battle bliss and made all Alushanira bow before me. Ought to pass it to Gelderfang, my apprentice, but despite my, despite his many talents in the art of killing, he loved his life far too much. He was afraid of death, too frightened to fight me and take the mask. He is not a true gladiator, not a real champion, but no one aside from the true children of the arena is capable of understanding this. Except me! Hello, your gladiators can't save you. I am a gladiator. When I see death coming, I do not flee. I kiss her dry lips with passion. The arena is eternal, and thus we are also eternal. Kill me, and you will be able to wear this mask. The gladiators grab their weapons. Defend your master, brothers and sisters. Show them what you're worth, and the crowd will fight for the right to buy you, and the arena will bow before your might. <laughs> Me, all right. We bit of siphon time here. I suppose you can. Attack! 
Be gone, fiend! I wish I could make them smaller because they are so big that it's actually difficult to see them or see anything going on here. Obsidian Mask of the Champion. Werlong's lifeless body lies at your feet. A bloody mist rises from his wounds. It is impossible to survive such wounds, yet you hear a voice coming from beneath the Obsidian Mask. Didn't I tell you that I am immortal? You've killed this body, but I am still here, right in front of you. The mask grins and winks at you. Are you a mask? A living mask? So it was you I've been talking to all this time. I am the first champion of the Battle Bliss, the great warrior and necromancer Rearlong. No one could say how many victories I won because they stopped keeping count. I was belligerent and bloodthirsty and my gifts impressed death herself. So, when my luck turned away from me and my life was bleeding out in the arena, death gave me a gift. She placed my spirit in this mask. So, under different names, I have claimed the champion's title again and again. The way I see it, you're not the hero you picture yourself as. You're just a coward who was afraid to die. Is this your body? Of course not. My mortal remains have long since turned to dust and black sludge. This body once belonged to one of my followers. Of decades ago, the gladiator wearing my mask perished and I took his body. My magic has kept the flesh in good condition all these years. Sadly, you've destroyed this body beyond repair and now I must find a new vessel. Sense the soul that hides within the mask. From the black polished stone, a restless, spiteful and bloodless, bloodthirsty soul glares suspiciously back at you. It is skilled enough in the art of puppetry to manipulate the bodies and mouths of those who once wore this mask. You can see the dozens, perhaps hundreds of faces of those who wore this mask and gave their bodies to the ghost, willingly or not. Subjugate the lesser undead who dare to show you disrespect. The mask is in your hand and you feel the black polished stone heat under your fingers until it starts glowing white. This doesn't cause you any pain, but the ghost dwelling within the mask starts howling wildly. You are the master of death, you are her lover and you are more precious to her than anyone else. Forgive me, I had no idea. Spare me and I will serve you, I swear. Obsidian Mask of the Champion. plus three, and that dagger plus three, buckler plus four, mystic grace. The rest seems fairly regular. What is this obsidian mask? The wearer of this mask gets a plus 10 competence bonus on the intimidation and mobility skill checks. In addition, whenever the wearer of this mask lands a killing blow, they gain temporary equal to the killed enemy's strength modifier for 5 rounds. I don't know. I think I have mobility from... something. If I put this on... I didn't particularly lose anything. But to the contrary, I gained something. I am casting Eagle Splendor on myself, so the plus four charisma that I get from this is negligible. However, getting the temporary hit points for three rounds compared to getting plus ten competence on intimidation and mobility checks in addition to the killing blow, which also gives temporary hit points. 
I think the mask is better. That gives me plus 45 intimidation. Which is pretty nifty. We need to donate the uh, funds to... Th th there is a quest or something, I think. The Conquest of Illusionera. If we uh, give him 50,000, then we will progress the quest. So we'll do that. Give Christoph Rolano 50,000 gold coins. Handle this gold wisely. The Count respectfully takes the money from your hands. The Pathfinder Society is grateful for your help, Commander. The unfortunate folk enslaved by demons will glorify your name throughout the Abyss. And now we have to go back to... the Battle Bliss. I suppose... Ah, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. I remember... Um, I think we'll wrap up this episode here. Uh, we'll go to the Battle Bliss. Uh, just use the portal to do that instead of uh, going there manually. And then we'll uh, see if we can find Trevor. For now, if you have any questions and or comments, then please do feel free to leave those in the comment section as per usual. Thank you so much for uh, watching the episode, and I hope to see you all in the next one.